Okay guys, I am trying again. My little buddy is asleep. So he may only be down for half an hour, so I gotta get this out quick. Alright, so <clears throat> the Ben Shapiro talk, I was really impressed with it. I really liked it. What I really liked was his call to action. And his call to action was basically we all have to fight for what's right and what's true. And that is true no matter you know what you believe. Fight for what's right and what's true. Now, I, as a Christian, know that the Bible is right and true, okay? So I'm not worried about that. <clears throat> I'll always fight for it. I'll always teach it in whatever form I can so that people can understand the truth of it, all right? So I was very happy to see that. Of course, the Q&A is always my favorite. I didn't have too many people who disagreed with them on this one, though, so, I mean, sometimes that's usually the ones that are the most fun, so... Take that for what you will. So I want to talk about the gun control issue. The gun control issue, I'm very disappointed in these. Um, let me say it this way, okay? Let me say it this way. I'm not so much disappointed in the businesses. The businesses have the right to sell or not sell something. My problem is that they think, or they at least are virtue signaling that they think that not selling to an 18 year old is what's going to change the world and solve this problem. It's not. It never will. Gun control never will. Now, I was going to hit on a bunch of points, but then I found this, you know, meme <laughs> that pretty much said it all. And it's over here, over here, right here. <laughs> and it says, the problem is not guns, it's hearts without God, homes without discipline, schools without prayer, and courts without justice. Now, let me break that down a little bit. So it's hearts without God. It's, it's people without the moral, without the moral upbringing, right? Whether it's a secular morality or Jesus, bringing up of Jesus and understanding that everyone's to be loved, everyone is to be known, everyone is created in the image of God and therefore worth something, okay? So there's that. Also... Oh, let me turn this down. All right. So, as I do this, I'm also kind of watching it on my phone so I can see if anybody chats and asks a question. So, hearts without God. People without the knowledge of who they are, because God teaches you who you are. He teaches you that you're worth something, that not only are you worth, worth something your neighbor is, and your neighbor is anyone next to you, so these things matter in the teaching of a person and bringing them up, all right? I don't subscribe to the idea that we are all just animals. I don't believe that. So there's that <laughs> as well. If you're just an animal, then it's no big deal that I go around and shooting all of you. Why would it, why would it be? So there's that as well. The heart with God will care about other people. And if you don't bring someone up, in the admonition of the Lord, like the Bible says, then what you get is people who don't care what happens to other people. People who believe that what happens to them doesn't matter, and so, and therefore, they can do whatever they want. Which includes grabbing whatever weapon they would like to grab and destroy people. And this is true. This is reality. This is how it is. You can see this played out in like the last two years. If you don't have a gun, then you will grab a truck. If you don't have a truck, then you will grab a knife and you can kill just as many people with a knife as you can a gun. My problem is always with the people around these people who are not taking any kind of responsibility within themselves to go and talk to this person and try and help. That's a problem, guys. We should all be taking care of our neighbors in as much as they will allow us to, right? Let's say he doesn't allow us to. Let's all just watch him anyway. Let's all care about him and, and make sure he's doing all right, or she, or whoever. This is what matters in this world. This is what God wants us to do. He wants us to care for our neighbors, and our neighbors are anyone that's around us. Like this guy out here moving earth. <laughs> Distracting me. <laughs> okay, so homes without discipline. People say right now the big thing is mental health, right? Okay, so 
if you are in a house with discipline, this, is, this does not mean that you are beaten or whatever. It means that you are corrected lovingly. If you are a person who has a mental health issue and you are not taking your meds, then the correction is you're going to take your meds. If you have to grind up those meds and put them in some kind of food or applesauce or something, you're taking them. And it is the responsibility of the family and friends of this person to make sure they are taking those meds. Not only is it their responsibility, ultimately it's theirs, right? They need to be taking their meds. That needs to be clear to them through, through their whole life, okay? If they're not, then if, you, then if you're a sister, a brother, a friend, a grandmother, a, anyone who's involved, a church member, and you know this person is not taking their meds, and it is your job to say something to follow up with them, to see how they're doing, to try and talk to them. It is your job. It is your responsibility. You have a responsibility to your neighbor. And in this case, it is anyone and everyone who is around you. All right, so if you are a house with discipline, then you are a house that shows you care about people because you're not going to let them sit around and be stupid. You're not going to let them sit around and make the wrong choice without some kind of pushback. Okay. If it becomes obvious that this person refuses to take their meds and you take the proper legal steps that you may do. If someone refuses to take their meds and they are on medication for things like schizophrenia, it is legal for you to have them. As far as I know, I may be wrong about this, but as far as I know, it's legal for you to have them committed because they are refusing to do what they're supposed to do. Okay. All of this stuff causes drama, yes but it is the discipline that the home should be showing, all right? Not taking their meds is just as bad for them as it is for everyone else. And I know a lot of people, or I've known four people in my life who have had this situation where they need to take the meds and they won't do it. And what I ended up, what I ended up doing with these people is saying, look man, just take them because you feel great right now. And the reason you feel great right now is because of your medication. And I told, it, it was two girls, sorry, three girls and a guy. I was telling the guy, dude, crush it up in some applesauce and just take it. Just make it part of your morning meal. And then you'll never forget. Excuse me. Helping people to get where they need to be in life is what we're supposed to do as far as I'm concerned. You always need to be working on you and then helping another person, at least one. Okay, and I believe that there's biblical backing for that because it says to love your neighbor as yourself. Well, if I'm doing something dumb, then I would want someone to come to me like, hey, look, that's dumb. Don't do that here. Do this instead. You know, let me show you. Right. That's loving someone. And this is not what we do now. What we do now is, oh, he's a little weird. I'm going to leave him in the corner. Leaving them in the corner, almost, I'm going to say 95%, okay, because there's 5% where something else happens and it saves them. But 95% will guarantee that this person grows up without the love, without loving other people. Grows up with anger, grows up with despair as their main uh, emotional train that they run on. So every time you think to yourself, that guy's a little weird, I don't think I want to deal with him. Check yourself and just say, okay, look, I'm a little weird too. Maybe this guy just needs some help. Maybe this guy just needs a friend who's, who can deal with him. Maybe this guy just needs somebody he can call every once in a while to talk to. Be that person. Okay? If you can't, talk to someone else and say, hey, this guy needs help, but I don't know how to do it. Can you help me help him? Or maybe we can all help him together or her or whoever it is. All right, this is all... True. This is all the truth. We need to be out there doing this. All right. This says schools without prayer and courts without justice. The amount of people who don't believe that we're anything more than animals who have no purpose is growing. And if I can treat an animal any way I want, basically, I can kill them, that's okay, if they get too old, whatever, then that is how I am going to treat other people. Prayer, even if you don't pray, that moment to stop and think about how this day is going to go, what is going on, even if it's just a moment of silence, all right, 
those things matter in a person's life. Before I was a Christian and they had the prayer time frame, I would take that moment to think, okay, how's this day going to go? What am I going to do? Or it's just a moment to decompress and it matters. All right. Having this time frame, let's say you don't pray, but you meditate instead. Having that time frame to ground yourself in reality and, and to see things the way it should be, that is what we need in daily life. All right, so school's about prayer. I believe that if you pray to God, he will guide your steps and he will show you what to do. Guess what? If you don't pray and you take God out of things, the, the ability for people to see other people as people worth something goes away. And we see this. We see this every time this happens. Courts without justice. Yes, I've seen this too. People getting away with things like rape because of who their daddy is. People getting away with things like running somebody over with a car because they're transgender. And that just happens to be in vogue at the time. People become frustrated and they take things into their own hands. Again, because they don't have any of the stuff I just mentioned. Once you get down here to courts without justice, they then take all of this into their own hands and say, I'm going to fix this. And the best way we can ever figure out, because we're sinful and we have no idea without God, to fix a thing is to destroy it. To make it into something else, even. Okay. So you want to fix this problem we're having where people are going in and shooting each other? You are the answer. Those people are the answer. Not sitting on your butt watching TV. Not sitting on your butt watching YouTube. Hey, I do it too, right? Getting out and dealing with the people that you can deal with. That is the answer. Church. It is getting out of your church and out into this world like God told us to. In whatever way that is. Right now, I am doing this. I'm doing this as the best I understand now. I talk to people as well in my daily life. Okay? Going out and making something happen. That's what we're here to do. Making the good happen. Making it what it's supposed to be. Gun control is only the people in power trying to control the little man, the little person. The person not in control. Okay? You can, through common sense, debunk most of the gun control arguments that are out there. The big one, mental illness, right? Who gets to decide what a mental illness is? Who gets to decide that? How do we decide that? Because if an atheist decides that, I have a mental illness because I believe in God, and therefore I cannot own a gun. You're going to take away the gun rights of like 95% of this country because they believe in a higher being? No, that's not right. It's immoral to do that. You see my point, though. This is not a good way to deal with this. What is a good way to deal with this is to get involved. All right, so the next one. Businesses only selling to 21-year-olds. A 21-year-old walks into your store, buys the gun, hands it to an 18-year-old. You, you did nothing. You essentially did nothing. All you did was make it one more step to get it. It's virtue signaling, band-aid, de minimis nonsense to do these things. All right, so the next thing. Let's see, what's the, what's the most recent one I've heard? Um, People don't have training. They just get it from their grandfather and then they don't know what to do. Okay, so let's say there's a 1% where that's true. Most of the time, you get a gun from your grandfather. Your dad has taught you something about guns. All right, you yourself are given a gun. You yourself go out and get training and understand what this gun does. Excuse me, when I was very young, probably 12, 13, excuse me, sorry, I was handling guns, two, three different types. But I was taught beforehand by my dad what they do. 
he took us out and he went to the shooting range. And at the shooting range, we shot plastic gerald, barrels, sorry, jugs, like milk jugs, full of water. And he said, this is what's going to happen to a person if you do this. So if you ever point a gun at a person, you better be sure that this is what you want to happen to them. All right. And as someone who wasn't who wasn't raised Christian, but was raised with a a moral system that you could say was half secular, half religious. I understood, hey, you don't actually want to do this. To somebody. <laughs> it's bad. OK, so there's that. You don't have training, get it. You can get it for free sometimes. You can get it for a re reduced and discount rate. You don't want to get training, sell the gun. Somebody else will want it. There is responsibility. There's personal responsibility, not only in the people who get the gun, but in the, the people around that person with the gun. You, your friend gets a gun, he doesn't know crap all about it. Pay for him to get some training. Go with him and get your own training. This is very simple stuff, guys. This is stuff we used to do all the time, but that we don't do anymore. All right, so the next one I've heard. Nobody needs an AR-15. Nobody needs assault weapons. Okay, so in the Constitution, we talk about these rights are given to us by God. Now, whether these people, not all the people who wrote the Constitution were Christian, but what they were, were deists who believe that there was a greater thing, an unmoved mover, who created us and gave us rights that are inalienable, rights that come down to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The First and Second Amendments are what gives us liberty and which gives us life, which, able, which enables us to pursue happiness. The Second Amendment is there so that we can protect ourselves from a tyrannical government, which is what governments do. They start out great, they end up taking all your money, taking you, enslaving you. This is what government is. We see this all the time. Just read your history. Any and all government, small or big, gets that way. That's why we are the great experiment, because we are a mix of two different types of governments. So, that being the case, yes, I do. Where is our system now of gov of, of our military system? I have to be able to defend myself against the military that the government has against the cops that the government has. I have to be able to do that. At what point are we gonna be able to say, okay, this is enough. You can't have any more of my rights. You can't have any more of my freedom. You can't have any more. If we are at the point where now we can't even have handguns because even the most recent one that just happened at University uh, UMC, I think, I, I'll have to look it up again to be sure. These guys, Okay, they, I lost my train of thought, sorry, the little buddy in the lake. <laughs> so our Second Amendment is there to protect, to, so that we can be protected against our government. When these guys go rogue and they decide that, hey, guess what, you can't do that anymore. Why? Because we say so. You have got to be able to pick up a gun and say, no, you're not going to make me do that. No, you're not going to. All right. When a government starts coming for children because they do do that, that is historical as well. Just, just look it up. Right now we have a big problem that's everywhere with child, child soldiers. You think that their parents really said, yeah, you should go be a soldier at 10. No, governments take these children and they make them soldiers. Should I not be able to go against, personally, as a parent, those people? Should I not be able to have the weaponry to do that? People say, oh, that's never going to happen in America. That's never going to happen. You don't know that. Do you know the future? No, you do not. So how about you just let me defend myself? Give you the ability and the freedom to take whatever you like to defend yourself. These, these things just aren't... They're not hard things to understand. It's just basic stuff. So that's all I wanted to say today, guys. I'm sorry that this got a little cut off.
My little buddy is not sleeping as long as he usually does. <laughs> so I will hopefully see you guys tomorrow. It looks like this works, and I'm really hoping it does because I'd like to just record and then upload. <laughs> So we'll see. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Remember, read your Bible, start learning some history, pray, guys. If you don't pray, meditate, think about this. Even Gandhi said, when talking about nuclear weaponry, until we get rid of the reason why man needs the nuclear weapon, getting rid of the weapons, getting rid of the nukes won't even matter. Right? We know this is a truth. It said it said in the Bible and also in many other writings. Hey, the problem lies with us, not with our inanimate objects that we have, not with our weapons. Well, until tomorrow, guys, I will see you later. Bye.